I'm Shi Sharifi here on democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn now to the Middle Eastern nation of Yemen, the latest target of U.S.-backed military strikes against suspected al-Qaeda sites. ABC News reports that President Obama directly ordered two cruise missile attacks in Yemen last week. According to The New York Times, the United States gave Yemeni forces military hardware and intelligence to carry out the attack. The Yemeni government says the raids targeted al-Qaeda training camps and foiled a planned series of suicide bombings. Admiral Mike Mullen praised the attack, citing concerns that Yemen was becoming, quote, another safe haven for terrorism. The main target of the attacks, al-Qaeda member Qasem al-Rim, was not among those killed. But a local Yemeni official said Sunday that over two-thirds of the dead were civilians, including 23 children and 17 women. At a speech last month announcing the escalation of the war in Afghanistan, President Obama hinted at a possible attack on Yemen. Violent extremism will not be finished quickly, and it extends well beyond Afghanistan and Pakistan. America will have to show our strength in the way that we end wars and prevent conflict, not just how we wage wars. We'll have to be nimble and precise in our use of military power. Where al-Qaeda and its allies attempt to establish a foothold, whether in Somalia or Yemen or elsewhere, they must be confronted by growing pressure and strong partnerships. Last week's strikes on alleged al-Qaeda hideouts come in the midst of the Yemeni government's battle against a rebellion in the north and a growing secessionist movement in the south. Saudi Arabia is backing Yemen's five-year-old war in the north, and Yemeni rebel forces claim that Saudi airstrikes Sunday night killed 54 people. For more, I'm joined now from Baltimore, Maryland, by Professor Charles Schmitz. He teaches geography at Towson University. He's a specialist on Yemen and president of the American Institute of Yemeni Studies. Professor Schmitz, welcome to Democracy Now! Uh, explain the significance of the U.S. attacks on Yemen last week. Uh, I, I think the, the attacks are significant, uh, given what President Obama said uh, in Oslo and the quote that you uh, just gave. Uh, I, I think it is uh, a new strategy, developing new strategy, uh, that the United States would become directly involved in attacks in Yemen. Uh, the United States has attacked Yemen in the past. We used one of the first uh, uh, predator strikes was in Yemen in 2002, I believe it was. Uh, but this, this seems to be a, a new policy. And what has been the response in Yemen? Uh, first, I believe it was the Yemeni government saying it was just the Yemeni military that engaged in this. And what is the relationship between the United States and the Yemen government? The relationship between the Yemeni government and the, and the United States is quite uh, ambiguous. Uh, it's been kind of a back-and-forth dance uh, for a long time. Uh, the, United, the, the Yemeni government has uh, cooperated with the United States in the war on terror. And the, the, the Yemeni government was fighting its own sort of war on terror pre, prior to 9-11. To um, and uh, when there were doubts expressed in Washington in the early days after 9-11, the Yemeni president went to Washington. There was a conversation between the Yemeni president and uh, President Bush. Uh, in which the Yemeni president assured uh, President Bush that the Yemeni government would uh, assist in the war on terror. Um, uh, there's been disagreements on uh, what exactly that means, uh, and, and uh, so the, the, it is an ambiguous relationship. The United States does supply uh, Yemen with anti-terror equipment, with military equipment. Uh, it tends to be equipment that's uh, geared to deal with surveillance, with control of borders, Coast Guard, anti-terror units, uh, and not sort of conventional warfare uh, weaponry. Um, in terms of uh, the reaction in Yemen, Yemen is in a very difficult uh, political situation right now. And so the reaction in Yemen is very much refracted through the lens of domestic politics. Um, and as you mentioned, there's a rebellion in the south. Uh, one of the strikes was in Abyan in the south. Uh, which is an area where the succession, the civil dis disobedience successional movement is uh, uh, quite strong. Uh, and there, uh, people on the ground saw lots of civilian casualties, uh, and they saw this as the United States backing what have been rather repressive tactics of the Yemeni regime of the uh, movement in the south. Uh, the al Houthi in the north also criticized that they, they equate it with, uh, as you mentioned, 
the Saudi airstrikes uh, in, the, in the north that also killed uh, civilian uh, casualties. So explain you have who to the Houthi are, within Yemen. Professor Schmitz, explain who the Houthi uh, are. Uh, the, the Houthi uh, are part, uh, they're, they're, they're Zaydis. Uh, they are, uh, we can say it's part of a Zaydi revivalist movement. The Zaydis are Shia. Uh, most of North Yemen is Zaidi, somewhere between 30 to 40 percent of North Yemen is Zaidi. Uh, the president and most of the top military are also Zaidi, uh, so it's really a political conflict. But uh, the Zaidi and Sada, they are the old religious aristocracy. Yemen was ruled by a, a religious aristocracy for about a thousand years. And in 1962, there was a Republican uh, coup that established the republic. Uh, what's interesting is in that, uh, following that coup, there was a proxy war between Egypt and Saudi Arabia uh, in which the Saudis backed, the, in essence, the Zaydis in the north, the Zaydi aristocracy, because the Zaydi aristocracy was royalists and the uh, Saudi government was supporting royalism against the republican trends in Yemen. The republic won. Uh, now, uh, sort of some of those same folks, uh, the Saudis are against. Um, the, the Yemeni government, in fact, the, the president supported uh, this guy, al Houthi, Badr, the, the, the guy who began this movement. He supported them between 1997 and 2004 uh, because he saw them as a counterweight against uh, Wahhabi and Salafist uh, movements that were in the, in the north that the president had initially backed but then was worried about them getting too strong. So the, the, the situation is quite quite complex. We can say that uh, the rebellion in the north is a, about a region who feels marginalized, who is, was at the losing end of a civil war in the 60s, um, and uh, who feels that their, uh, their religious identity and their sort of uh, political economic uh, uh, survival is at risk, that this government uh, has not done what it uh, is asked to do in terms of bringing development, that it discriminates against it, that it feels that uh, it has to take matters into its own hands. We're talking to Charles Schmitz, who is a professor of geography at Towson University in Baltimore, also president of the American Institute um, uh, for Yemeni Studies. So is the U.S. working with Saudi Arabia hand-in-hand in, hand in Yemen, and is al-Qaeda there? Is al-Qaeda training there, and the effects of these attacks, like last week's, the U.S. on the civilian population? Does it radicalize them? Uh, the the Saudis um, have a long relationship with Yemen. They have also an ambiguous relationship with Yemen. The Saudi the relationship between Saudi Arabia and Yemen is somewhat like the relationship between the United States and Mexico. Uh, Mexico is a very poor country, uh, somewhat unstable, and its problems spill into the United States. Uh, the, that's that's the fear of the Saudis that that Yemen is going to destabilize. Uh, and that uh, its problems will spill into Saudi Arabia. The, the Saudis are also sometimes afraid of a, of a strong united Yemeni state, so they have an ambiguous relationship to Saudi Arabia. The United States uh, followed Saudi policy, basically let the Saudis tell us what to do, until uh, the 90s when uh, Yemen unified. It was a divided Cold War state, a north and the south. The south was a Soviet satellite state. Um, and when Yemen unified, the United States started to develop an independent policy. So, no, the United States has its own policy um, that is somewhat different than the Saudi policy in Yemen. Uh, in terms of the radicalization, um, one of the uh, one of the difficulties of U.S. policy, uh, we see this, I think, in Pakistan as well, is that, uh, you know, what is our end game in the war on terror? Uh, the end game in the war on terror, of course, is stability and peace and prosperity. Uh, uh, to get people to buy into the system, to feel that uh, the regime that they live in, uh, they have a stake in. And uh, in, in Yemen, uh, in, in Yemen, uh, we, uh, we're afraid that the regime is going to fall, uh, and so we want to take our own action, but that may 
uh, also delegitimize the regime. Uh, so we're playing a delicate uh, balance here. Charles Schmitz, I want to thank you for being with us, professor of geography at Towson University and specialist on Yemen, president of the American Institute for Yemeni Studies. That does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Shreve Fadokadu, Sarah Mata, Angela Comet, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Honey Masood, Ravi Karen, Mike DeFilippo, Peter Curry, Miguel Nagara, our engineer. Special thanks to Elizabeth Press, Nick Gilla, Hugh Grant, Samantha Chambly. A very happy birthday to Brenda Murad. And also thanks to Jessel Noor, John Gerber, Vesta Godars. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us. Our website is democracy.